The story begins with a man used to call by Bakshin. He earns a nickname as a man who was cursed by a witch, and everything he touches will die. Moreover, his mother kicked him out of their house, locking him away in a mansion in the heart of the forest. In the mansion, Bakken lies with Alice, his maid and also his childhood friend. She always seduces him with her body to see his reaction which she thinks is very cute. That's how they spend their day in the big mansion, away from everyone. One day, Bakken receives a letter from his childhood friend Philip. In his letter, Philip asks Bokchan if he can pay him a visit in his mansion. Bokchan agrees to his request as he thinks he is going to make friends again. After that, Philip comes to his mansion, heavily guarded, breaking his dream to make friend with Philip. On the other hand, Philip is scared when he sees a plant that Bokchan accidentally touched, suddenly whiter and dies. As he is about to leave the mansion, he makes an excuse to Bokchan so that he can talk to Alice without he knowing. There Philip tries to convince her to lead the monster, a nickname he gave to Bokchan. Phillips reveals he was forced to visit Bokchan because Bokchan's mother asked him to spy on his condition. His mother hopes the heir to the family that was originally in the hands of Bokchan can be replaced by Bokchan's younger brother and throw him away forever from the family. After that, Philip takes his lee and swears he will never come back. Bokchan is disappointed and feels blue at the same time. However, he swears that one day he will break the curse and pay Alice's kindness by confessing his feelings to her and marry her. Bokchan's mansion has now added one old occupant who has just come back. He is Rob. Rob is the butler who has been serving Bokchan since he was a kid. Rob works in his mansion with Alice. However, Bokchan is worried with Rob because he has bad eyesight. Rob often almost bumps into him and about to touch him. Apart from that, Bakken is good at playing the piano and he hopes one day he can make a living by selling his songs. It is seen Bakken is playing his song he wrote for Alice. Alice listens to him closely, and as she is about to go back to work, she almost kisses him, who is fake sleeping. The following day, Bakken gets a visitor of Viola. Viola is his younger sister. She has quite a wild personality, but she has great sympathy towards Bakken as her brother. She is aware that her brother is attracted to Alice, and she teases him. Viola tells him to break his curse soon and return to their house and gather with family. After that, Viola hurries up to leave, but she accidentally bumps into Rob. Due to that incident, she feels she has fallen for Rob, even though they have quite a great age gap. After she leaves, Bakken finds a cat in his mansion. It makes him worry as he is afraid the cat may touch him. Thus, Alice and Rob try to find out where it came from. Just then, Rob notices a note on its neck, and he tells Bokshan that the cat was thrown away. Bokshan then takes the cat outside, and he finds other cats. He thinks they are family. That night, Bokshan stands on the balcony, staring at the moon that is shining gracefully. Soon, Alice comes to inform him it is time for dinner. Bokshan then recalls his grandfather who used to dance with Alice's mother in the room. Bokshan then incites Alice to dance with him, which she refuses it. However, it turns out she was only teasing him, and she accepts his offer. Thus, they begin to dance without touching each other, and only adjusting to their movements. However, as it is looked from the shadow of their figures, they seem to dance for real. After that, Bokin hesitantly asks Alice her opinion about him as a man. Alice replies to him without a doubt about her feelings for him. She states she likes him, making him happy and shy at the same time. He goes on to stand up and invites Alice to have dinner with him. The next morning, Bakken starts his day with warm greetings from Alice and Rob. Bakken spends his time playing billiards. Alice joins him in the pool and challenges him with the condition that the loser must obey the winner. Finally, the game is won by Alice, and she asks him to accompany her to the city to watch the costume festival. Alice assures him that with a large costume he won't harm other people even if he bumps into someone. Bakken gives in and agrees to go with her. As they walk along the street, Alice is separated from Bakshin due to the crowd of people passing by. Alice then encounters someone in a white costume who recognizes her as Sharon Lendroth. Alice then comments that Sharon is her mother. The person in white costume nods and leaves her after claiming that she is an acquaintance of Sharon. Elsewhere, Bakshin is asked by a little boy to help him. The boy is separated from his mother, and he cries while pulling Bakshin's costume. Wanting to calm him down, Bakshin finds a piano with no one to play on it. He gets to the piano and plays it well. His performance attracts the people's attention, and the boy dances happily along with the people around them. The boy finally finds his mother, and so does Bakshin who finally finds Alice. Alice and Bakshin go on to walk along the crowd, and they stop by the mask seller's stall. They look at a mask which they think is similar to Bakshin, 
and the seller explains the mask is inspired by the god of the death who is said living in Rift Forest. It makes Bakshan realize that there are many rumors spreading in the city about him. The day is getting dark, and they watch a legendary romantic play. After that, Alice invites him to go on a tower. There, she tells him a legend talking about a princess who fell in love with a prince. They loved each other, but the prince was kidnapped by a witch and was taken to the moon. However, the princess didn't lose hope, and in every full moon, she kissed the moon, hoping it would reach the prince. Bakken feels gloomy as he finds his condition with Alice is different from the legend Alice told him just now, where they felt close to each other even though they were separated. However, he and Alice feel distant as they cannot touch each other even though they are close. Bokshan and Alice then decide to head back to his mansion. Alice then gives him a letter, an invitation to go to her room if he cannot sleep. Bokken thinks she invites him for something warm, but it turns out she intends to make him relax and sleep soundly. Before his consciousness goes away, Bakken invites Alice to go with him tomorrow evening. The following night, Bakken invites Alice to get in a boat in a lake to see the shooting stars that only occur once in ten years. The wind blows quite hard, sending Bakshan's hat to fly over them. Alice, who is trying to catch the hat, fell into the lake. Bokken wants to reach her, but he is slapped by the fact that he cannot touch her, and is disappointed. In return, Alice asks him to kiss her, although he knows it will kill her. Bokken gathers his courage to try, but he stops midway as he finds he cannot do that. However, Alice teases him, and he falls into the lake. Soon, they get out of the lake. Bokken looks mad, and he coincidentally reveals his intention to confess his feelings to her seriously. Alice is a bit surprised with his words. Returning to his mansion, Bokshan and Alice warm themselves in front of the fireplace. Alice then tells him to see the shooting stars again in the lake ten years ahead. Bokshan feels happy to hear that, thinking that she will stay by his side at least for ten years ahead. Scene switches to Bokshan, who is reading a book in the library. Alice and Rob come in and informs his books have just arrived, and tidy them up in the shelves. Bokshan takes a look at Alice, who seems to avoid him. He then asks Rob to make sure his worry. It turns out she has a fever. Bokken then tells her to take a rest. In her room, Bokken visits her. The scene then moves to Bokken, who is looking outside the window while paying attention to the temperature changes. Alice tells him that Rob guessed there will be snow tomorrow. Alice wishes Bokken to play and spend his time in the snow. Bokken refuses her idea, but she gives him a scarf she made. Bokken finally agrees to play with her tomorrow. The following day, Bokken, Alice and Rob are seen playing with snow outside of his mansion, and they make a snowman. Feeling they have played quite long, they decide to go inside. Alice intends to wash Bokshan's clothes and scarf, but he refuses and avoids her as he doesn't want to take off the scarf from Alice. At that time, Alice realizes that one of her earrings from her mother was lost. She wants to look for it, but there is a snowstorm outside. Bokshan, who finds out about it, rushes to go outside to look for her earring. However, he is having a hard time to find it due to the heavy snowstorm and his unhealthy condition. He falls off on the snow and his scope gets stuck on the snow numerous times until he is exhausted and faints. On the other hand, a bat is seen looking for his shelter and it finds Bakshin's mansion. Arriving at the courtyard, the bat suddenly transforms into a human and finds Bakshin lying unconscious on the snow. The figure wakes Bakshin up and he is surprised to see a certain figure in front of him while offering her hand. Bokken avoids her touch while saying that he was cursed by a witch so that every living thing will die if he touches it. The figure then asks him why he was lying on the snow. Bokken explains he was looking for his maid's earring who was lost. Seeing his determination, she uses her magic to explode the snow at the courtyard and finds the lost earring. After that, she introduces himself to Bokken. Her name is Kaf, and she is a witch. Bokken then invites her to come into his mansion. Bokken then asks her about curse and witch but she cannot answer his question because as a half-blood witch, she is hated by the witches and also by the humans. She tells him that her parents were annihilated by the witch hunters even though her father was a human, and it led her to lose her trust towards both the humans and the witches. Moreover, she states that she only believes in her best friend, who is a wizard, that he likely knows about the witch and the curse that befell Bokshan. Bokshan recalls Philip's attitude when he visited his mansion and Bokshan starts to feel bad towards Calf but Kaf doesn't buy it. She states her friend perhaps can be a help for him. Bokken examines her expression when she talks about her friend and guesses she likes him. Kaf becomes awkward and she jumps out of the window, leaving his mansion. The next morning, Alice is in the courtyard, clearing the snowman. 
She recalls her childhood when Bokken told her she looked like a snow fairy. Bokken comes with an umbrella in his hand and tells Alice to come inside. He then tells her to get some tea with him. Bokken tells her the same word as before, that Alice suits to the snow and looks like a snow fairy. Alice realizes that Bokken never changes. Later, Bokken is in the library with Alice. Soon after, Viola comes to see him, and coincidentally, Rob drops by the library. Viola, who likes Rob, is nervous in front of him. Rob then excuses himself and states he will make some tea for Viola and Bokchan. Shortly after, Alice comes and brings tea and snacks for Viola and Bokchan. Viola tells Alive to learn doing a cute face from her, and Alice does as what she instructed. Bokchan, who sees Alice with cute face, is getting nervous. Vila and Rob are seen walking along the corridor and find Bokchan and Alice are cooking. Viola insists on helping Alice. Thus, Bokchan tells Viola and Rob to take the dough together. While shaping the dough, Viola states she is glad there is someone who always supports her brother even though he was cursed. Moreover, she asks Rob to tell his brother to get his curse lifted and return to family. Rob thanks her for still caring about his master. In the afternoon, Viola decides to go home, and as she is about to get in the carriage, Rob goes after her and gives a bucket of bread they had made. The following day, Bookshin and Alice play ice skating in a frozen lake. As he watches Alice playing, he is approached by a white crow that is able to speak. The crow tells him he is looking for his lost witch friend. Bokin guesses Calf is the person he is looking for, which he confirms. He states that Calf is the only person he trusts. Elsewhere, Alice finds Calf in the middle of the frozen lake. Alice comes to Bokchen and tells him that she found something. At the same time, Bokin tells her he meets Calf's friend. The crow then transforms into a human and introduces himself. He is a wizard, and his name is Zane. Zane teases Alice, which is interrupted by Bokshin. Just then, Alice takes out something from her chest. It turns out to be Calf in her bat form. Calf immediately transforms into her human form and borrows Alice's skates and learns playing ice skating with Zane. On the other hand, Bokshin is also learning to play ice skating. He feels envy with Calf who can touch his Zane. Meanwhile, Zane is envy with Alice and Bokshin who can be honest with their feelings. The day is getting dark, and they return to the mansion. Outside the gate, Zane and Calf excuse themselves, telling Bokchen that they will fetch him on the red full moon to attend the wizard association meeting to investigate about the curse and the witch who cursed him. After Zane and Calf leave, Alice asks Bokchen to come with him in the wizard association meeting and coaxes him with cute face like Viola taught her. Bokchen cannot reject her and finally allows her to come with him. That night, Viola comes to Alice's room to sleep over. She tells Viola that she likes Rob. Alice, who has found out about it, pretends to look surprised to make her happy. Viola asks her if she has someone she likes. Alice then tells her she likes someone who looks like a prince who had saved her life. Viola goes on to state that she wants an older sister as her mother only pays attention to her brother, although she has tried many times to get her attention. She tells Alice that she wants to get affection and sleeps. Bokken comes into Alice's room, looking for his sister and finds her sleeping, leaning on Alice's shoulder. It makes Bokchen envy with Viola, and Alice tells him that the next day Viola wakes up he must often compliment her. The next morning, Alice calms Viola's hair. Viola finds her brother is looking at her and Alice. Bokchen tries to praise Viola, but his compliment is pushed aside. Viola then talks about her conversation with Alice last night. Bokchen is curious and asks them, but none of them answers him. Like usual, Bokken starts his day by reading books. The cold air makes he want to read in the greenhouse. As he arrives there, he and Alice find the greenhouse is full of wild plants and is in disorder. Alice states she and Rob really forgot about the greenhouse, but Bokken understands as she and Rob take care of the mansion alone. Bokshan and Alice then proceed to clear the greenhouse. Bokken helps her by touching the plants they don't need and makes the plants die and easy to get rid of. Bokin looks for Alice and finds her looking at the flower in a corner. Alice tells him she finished looking at them and Bokin can get rid of it. Bokin touches the flowers and they become dried. He then forms the flowers into a headpiece and gives it to Alice. Alice feels happy and tells him she has a treasure. On the other hand, Viola is having dinner with her mother and her brother. Her mother asks her where she has been lately, which she answers that she went to her friend's house. Her mother warns her to act like a noble. Viola can only agree to her request while eating her food. Returning to Bokchen, who is walking in the corridor and suddenly hears Alice's voice who sounds like she is in trouble. He runs to see what happened and is surprised to find her naked. 
Alice tells him she is just getting out of the shower and finds her pajama stolen by a cat. Bokshin then goes to look for her clothes and the cat that stole it. However, Alice tells him she wants to help him. Bokshin looks at her in disbelief as she is only wearing a towel to cover her body. Thus, he takes off his suit and puts it on Alice. Alice is happy and she seduces him. They finally find Alice's clothes, but it is torn already. Bokshin then tells her he will buy her another clothes, but Alice is sad since Bokkin praised the clothes. They go back to her room, and Bokkin tells her to take a shower after looking for her clothes. Alice teases him, inviting him to take a shower with her, and Bokkin rushes to leave her room. The following night, Zane and Kaf come to fetch Bokshan and meet Rob by the door. On the other hand, Bokshan and Alice get ready to go to the Sabbath meeting. Zane opens a portal to the meeting and Kaf gives them robes that can disguise their human scent. Rob is worried with Bokshan and Alice, but Bokken assures him they will be all right and return home soon. Arriving at the witch world, Bokken feels a bit scared. On the contrary, Alice feels calm and steady. Bozen is amazed with the witch's attitude who are polite during the meeting. Deleth, the leader of the witches, checks their attendance. Kaf and Zane agree to introduce Bokshan and Alice as their relatives, but Kaf slipped her tongue, mentioning they are her son and daughter with Zane. The meeting ends without Bokshan obtaining any information. The witches approach Zane and Kaf. One of them calls Kaf a half-blood witch, which is immediately defended by Zane. Meanwhile, Alice goes to meet Deleth, and Bakken gets stuck in a play with the wizards. Surprisingly, Deleth recognizes Alice, and Alice is about to ask him about her mother, but she doesn't get the answer. Bokshin then walks towards Alice, and Deleth states he met Bokshin when he was a child. Bokshin asks him about the curse and the witch that cursed him, but Deleth tells him the witch that cursed him is a brilliant witch who had died because of her intelligence. Deleth tells them she hates the witch that cursed him and asks him to give in. After that, Deleth burns Bokshin's robe, causing his presence detected by the witches. Bokshin and Alice hurry up to reach the portal that connects to the human world. Unfortunately, Alice gets caught by a carnivorous plant that is issued by a witch. Bokin touches the plant, and it immediately withers, and he rescues her. Finally, they manage to get to the portal and return to the mansion. Alice thanks him for saving her life and praises him. Bokin then thanks Kaf and Zane for helping them, and asks them why they helped him. Kaf replies she is with Bokin's attitude and wants to be friend with him. Bokin feels cherished by her words. Kaf and Zane excuse themselves and tell him they will visit him and Alice as friends. Bokin expresses his joy for having friends with Alice. Outside, Kaf feels relieved they can return safely. The scene switches to Bokin, who is drinking his tea and is accompanied by Alice. Bokin imagines Alice wearing a white maid uniform and is ashamed with his own thoughts. Later, Bokin sees Alice, who receives a magic cauldron she bought in the market. Alice invites Bokin to make potion with it. Alice puts Odd's materials into the cauldron. Bokin tries to prevent her, but not to Vale. Lastly, Alice leaves the last step to Bokshin. She tells him to imagine favorable things, and he thinks of Alice. Finally, the potion is done, and Alice explains the potion was said to have virtues of lifting the curse. Alice feeds him a spoon of the potion. After that, Bokshin tries to touch a rose to see if his curse has been lifted. However, the rose still withers after getting his touch. They then give the magic cauldron to Rob, and the cauldron feels happy to have Rob as its master. On the other hand, Viola looks at Rob with the cauldron, and she is after him. Bokin calls Alice and tells her to stop Viola, who seems planning to break the cauldron. In the library, Alice accidentally sees the song notes. Bokin approaches Alice, and Alice asks him to play the song. It is believed that the person who can finish the song, his soul will be purified, but if he cannot finish it, he will be mad. Bokin decides to give it a try. He thinks the song is quite difficult. However, he is disturbed by someone who suddenly appears in front of him. It turns out the spirit of the author makes its presence and disturbs him. The author tries to distract him. He talks to Bokshan, and furthermore, he also disturbs Alice to get Bokshan distracted. Bokin tries to finish this song immediately. However, as he finished the song, he didn't get his soul purified. Instead, the author's soul gets purified, and he can rest in peace. The following day, Bokken intends to give surprise to Alice, and he goes in front of her room and wait for her there. However, Alice heads out of her room by wearing a mini dress and surprises him. Actually, he wanted to make Alice surprised because Viola told him about the suspension bridge effect. She said that if he is with someone and he feels his heart races from panic or fear, 
it will be mistaken for love. Thus, Botkin tried to make Alice scared or startled to get her heart racing. Botkin tries everything to scare her or to make her heart racing, but all goes failed. Instead, Botkin gets scared himself. His fear reaches its peak when he looks at the picture of a woman with bloody eyes. Rob, who sees it, talks to Alice and ascertains that Alice is the one who put the picture. Alice confirms it and asks Rib to keep it a secret. They look at Bokshin who is freaking out until breaking a pot. Immediately, Rob tells Bokshin not to touch the plant, as it has been in the manor since long and it blooms once in 50 years. Freak out, Bokshin runs out of the room and hides from Rob, and Alice follows him behind. Bokshin and Alice goes to his room and hide under the bed. As Alice tries to touch him, Rob appears, surprising both of them, and explains that there are some jewelries inside pot that he broke. Rob explained the jewelries belonged to his mother and his grandmother and hands the jewelries over to Bakchen. Alice compliments him for finding the long lost treasures, but Rob scolds him for acting reckless. Later Bakchen wakes up and finds Alice approaching him and explains they are in a dream after they opened a book which can grant their wish if they succeed catch a bunny with a clock. In the dream world, Bakchen can touch Alice as he pleases. They start looking for the rabbit, but it keeps running from them until seven hours have passed. Alice and Bakchen decide to end their pursuit with a kiss, but before they can do it, Bakchen has returned to the real world and wakes up next to Alice in the library. The book's spirit nags at them as they didn't get the rabbit and returns inside the book. Bakchen, who realizes that he once again failed in his effort to break the curse, chooses to go back to sleep next to Alice in hope they can continue what they were doing in the dream. The scene switches and shows Calf visiting Bakchen without Zane. Calf asks them to teach her read and write to impress Zane, and Rob begins teaching her. Bokchen then asks her where Zane is. Calf replies Zane is in the circus site, because at that place his identity as a wizard is not being suspected regardless of how they look like. Elsewhere, Walter, Bokchen's younger brother and Viola's second brother catches Viola who is going to the villa, where Bokchen's lies. Walter tries to stop her from going out since it is nearly lunchtime with their mother. But Viola refuses and calls him the second son as Botkin's replacement, and if his curse is lifted, he will take the role of the head of the family. Walter expresses his hatred towards number two and Botkin. Viola still intends on going out even though Walter did not promise to keep her departure to the villa a secret from their mother. Walter then heads to have lunch with his mother and lies to her, saying Viola is going out to meet her friends. On the other hand, Viola arrives at the villa and is surprised to find Calf in the room. She thinks she is a thief, who wants to steal from her brother's manor, and she tries to catch her. However, Calf mistaken it, and thinks Viola is trying to play with her. As Viola catches Calf, she sits on her, and Calf, who is still clueless about her intention, asks her if she can sleep, and states that Viola looks like Bakchen, who is very kind, which she disagrees. Calf then asks her if she hates Bakchen, but she cannot answer her question. Just then, Bakchen, Alice, and Rob enter the room and are surprised to see them in such a position that leads to misunderstanding. Viola explains she mistaken Calf a thief and was trying to get her. Rob spots flakes of dust on Viola's hair and gets to remove it, making her blush and feels awkward. That night, Bokshan and Alice play chess while enjoying their tea. Looking at the snowfall outside reminds Alice at the time she arrived there for the first time. During that time, Bokshan was rude and refused anyone to come nearby, including Rob and Alice. Ron then came into his room and found the room was messed up, and so was Bokshan. Rob then introduced Alice, who was his childhood friend, that would be the maid in the villa. However, Bokshan refused it and told her to go away. Rob didn't listen to him and took Alice to the building where it would be her room, a storage room outside the main villa. The next morning, Alice wore her maid uniform and went to see Bokshan. Bokken told her she was fired because the uniform was too much revealing, but Alice ignored him and praised his hat. Later, Bokken decided to play the piano, but he changed his mind. Alice, who saw him behind the door, got into the room and brought his lunch. Bokken stated he would not eat until Alice quit working in his manner and suspected Alice to have side intention. Alice was smiling at him and stated that his words were pretty and left the room. Later, Alice and Rob were in the library when Bakken came and asked Alice to come with him. Bakken told Alice to tidy up his room in three days, and if she failed, she would have been fired. Alice started to clean the room and took the glass shards from the floor and accidentally cut her palm. She recalled the time Bakken touched her hand before he got cursed. Finally, Alice managed to clean his room in one night, didn't want to have anyone around him, 
Bakken decided to leave the villa in the middle of the night when snow fell. He fell off numerous times, and as he was about to lose his consciousness, Alice came and scolded him. Alice told him to value his life because he was her savior. They finally returned to the villa and sat in front of the fireplace. Just then, Rob arrived and Bakshin apologized to him for making him worry. But Rob didn't buy it and stated that Bakshin was getting closer to Alice, which he confirmed and stated that he would probably like her. Returning back to the present, Alice wins the game. Alice explains as Bakshan was daydreaming, she moved his chess piece. Boken calls she is cheating, but he bears with it as he finds she is cute. Before the Christmas Eve, Viola asks Bakshan and Alice about the gift she is going to give to Rob. As suggested by Alice, she decides to give him a handkerchief. Alice then tells him they will hold a party on the Christmas Eve and that Kath and Zane will be coming for the party. Boken feels inferior and not sure if he can attend a party that is held by humans, which Alice confirms as Bakshan is also a human being. On the other hand, Viola is seen with her mother. Her mother tells her she must stay at home on the Christmas Eve and celebrate it with family, which she agrees. As she is about to leave, her mother tells her to dress up like a lady. Once again, Viola cannot argue with her mother and agrees to her mother's request. Viola then heads out to Bakshan's manor. Walter, who finds out about it, immediately follows her and disguises as her driver. In the villa, Kaf and Zane come to the villa and bring Bakshan and Alice a spruce as a gift. Kaf is excited to decorate the spruce into a Christmas tree with Alice. Bokshan and Zane are in charge of decorating the room. Bakken asks if it will be better to do the job together, but Zane denies and leaves the hard job to the ladies. Zane tells him that Kaf is not reliable unless her attitude and her cute face. Bokshan then tells Zane to say it to Kaf on person, but Zane refuses it. Finished decorating the spruce, Kaf is excited to show the result to Zane, who is asleep. Kaf seems to want Zane to compliment her badly. Zane recalls Bakshan's words earlier that he needs to tell her in person. He then compliments that she did a great job. Furthermore, he also praises her beauty. However, Kaf is seen to fall asleep while standing right next to Zane. Seeing that, Zane gets to put her on the couch and covers her with his coat. As Zane turns his head, Kaf opens her eyes and she is blushing. Meanwhile, Viola and Walter arrive at the villa and Viola immediately enters the villa and accidentally drops her gift to Rob. Walter picks it up and sneaks into the villa. As he walks the corridor, he finds Santa Claus' costume and he puts it on. As he is about to leave, Kaf sees him and mistaken him the real Santa Claus. Walter gives her Viola's gift in hope Kaf will leave him alone. However, Kaf keeps following him and even helps him escape through the chimney. On the other hand, Viola gives in looking for her gift and decides to go back to the room. Viola likes to stuck to Zane because of his warm feather and Zane takes advantage of it. Just then, Alice and Rob tell them the Santa costume they had prepared was lost. However, Rob still acts like Santa Claus. On the other hand, Walter, who makes a sudden appearance in the fireplace through the chimney, takes off the costume. Viola recognizes him and calls him brother. Bokshan is amazed and jealous at the same time because he has a cool younger brother. Walter doesn't accept the fact that Bokshan is jealous with him as he has lived as his replacement all this time. Just then, Kaf enters the room through the window and asks where the Santa is. Since she cannot find him, Kaf takes out the gift that Walter gave her. Viola who recognizes her gift immediately turns to get it back. Alice and Rob head to the kitchen to prepare dinner for them. Walter expresses his annoyance to Bakshan, but he is always interrupted by Kaf and Viola, who are still fighting over the gift. Kaf then burns Viola's gift, and Bakshan tries to put it out, and Viola manages to get her gift back. Viola thanks him, which makes him happy. Walter then challenges Bakshan, who can find out about Bakshan's curse will be the head of the family, and the loser will be the replacement forever. Bakshan takes it, and Walter leaves the room. Arriving at his carriage, he realizes he cannot go home without Viola. After the guests leave, Bokshan and Alice go on a walk outside. Alice seduces him until he falls on the snow. Bokshan recalls his past when he almost gave in due to the burden he had to bear because of the curse. And Alice came and gave him hope to survive. Now Bokshan has several people around him whom he adored and he doesn't have a reason to give in. Alice who hears it feels impressed and takes it as her Christmas gift from Bokshan. Alice then sleeps by his side, stating she wants to feel the cold Bakken feels as they will live together forever. That night, Viola dreams of her mother who was a maid in the young master's manor when he was a child. Sharon Lendrot was known as a kind-hearted and all-round maid in the manor. Sharon put her on the bed, and Alice wakes up from her sleep. 
On the other hand, their mother is mad at Viola and Walter because they missed Christmas Eve with their family. The scene switches to Zane and Calf. Calf is seen shopping on her own. It turns out Viola told her that she becomes hopeless because Zane spoils her. Zane then decides to let her shopping on her own, but still follows her without she realizing. Initially, everything runs smoothly until her money is stolen by a little boy. Calf catches the kid and get her money back. The boy is about to fall and is stabbed by a spiked fence. Calf gets to help him, and as a result, she makes her groceries fall on the ground. Zane approaches her and states that he won't be able to forget his bad habit, meaning that he cannot leave Calf alone. Returning to Alice, she meets Bakshin, who is going on a walk around the villa because he has sleep difficulty. Alice then tells Bakshin to sleep together. In the bed, Bakshin tries to keep his distance so that he won't touch her. He also tells her to leave if he is asleep, but he gets nervous because he is sleeping next to the girl he likes, making him unable to sleep and keep staring at Alice. Alice, who is aware of that, turns to look at him. She seduces him and intends to take off her clothes. Bakken then states it is not right for an unmarried man and woman to sleep together, and it is not approved by his mother, who is quite strict. Alice is going to ask him about his mother, but she takes it back and asks him how he feels towards his mother. Bokin tells her his mother used to wait for him, and it makes him want to make up with her after his curse is lifted. Moreover, he states that he will talk about his relationship with Alice, even though he is aware that relationship between an heir of a noble family and a maid will be difficult. And if his family doesn't approve, then he will. However, before he continues, Alice interrupts him and tells him not to consider such a thing. Bokin agrees and will think about it when the time comes and he will lift his curse first. He excuses himself for being sleepy and tells her to leave and wishes to meet her in his dream. Alice replies to him and leaves. Outside, she feels gloomy and thinks that if Bakken manages to lift his curse, he will return to the man's manor. Alice goes to meet Rob before she returns to her room. The next morning, as Rob is smoking outside while taking a rest, Bakken approaches him and shows his gift from Alice. Rob thinks Bakken is often smiling now. Bokin is shy and goes inside as Alice calls him. Rob goes on to recall his memory when Bakshin was cursed and his mother had him to look after the cursed Bakshin. He was not afraid of the curse. Instead, he was worried as he had not had experience in raising a child without woman's help. However, he accepted the duty as an honor and considered Bakshin precious. However, as the time went by, Bakshin changed and he often attempted to run away until one day he shut himself in his room and closed his heart. During that time, Bakken had mental breakdown due to his loneliness and attempted suicide several times. Rob thought he would have been better if he had a friend to talk to, and Alice's figure came to his mind. He then went to see Alice and offered her to be Bakken's maid. Rob was impressed with her attitude even though she was treated unfairly by her aunt. She still gave her a deep bow when she was going to the villa. Since then, Alice has become an important and precious figure to Bakken. However, Rob understands that Alice is no more than Bakken's maid. That night, Alice came to see Rob. She told him about her feelings towards Bakken. She felt it was strange. However, Rob denied and told her it was normal and pure, as it was called fate, and he would not interfere with their relationship. Furthermore, he said that he would be happy as long as they were happy. The scene switches and shows an owl that is looking at the villa. Rob checks the windows and hears Bakken playing his piano accompanied by his loyal maid, Alice. Alice compliments his performance and is about to tease him. Bakken asks her to sing when he plays the piano. He plays songs about the owl and the kitten. Alice sings the kitten part, while Bakken takes the owl part. After that, they think it is time to go to bed, and Bakken walks her to her room. Bokin tells her he is getting more excited every day and more eager to break the curse so that he can return to his home and will bring Alice with him. Alice refuses Bakshan to walk her to her room and immediately gets out of his way. It turns out she wants to hide her sadness about his wish to bring her to his home. She realizes she is only his maid, and if his curse is lifted, she cannot meet him freely. She looks at her pendant with her mother's picture in it, and she is startled when she hears Bakshan's voice behind her. He insists on walking her to her room, but Alice refuses and states Bakshan should not treat a maid in such a way. However, Bakken denies and states that he just wants to treat her as a lady. Alice is blushing and whispers to Bakshan, telling him that even if it goes unrequited, she thinks the kitten would still be happy just falling in love with the owl. Bokin is confused and doesn't get an explanation from her. The scene shows Viola who is looking for a clue about Bakshan's curse in front of Walter. 
Viola finds a servant's journal in a drawer which she thinks can lead her to Bakshin's curse. She then leaves the room and tells Walter to clean the storage. Outside, she encounters her mother, and she looks at Viola, who looks messed up. Her mother scolds her and tells her to change her clothes. Viola then changes her dress and sees her mother who is writing a letter. Viola asks her mother if she can live for her own sake freely, which her mother disagrees. Viola gets mad, and she heads out to Bakshan's manor and sheds her frustration in front of Bakshan and Alice. She plans on staying in her brother's manor. Just then, Rob enters the room and praises her new look, which makes her happy. Viola then goes to Alice's room to sleep over, but she is not allowed to move in. Viola states there is something she wants to give to Alice. As Alice opens the door, they find Calf is in the room. Viola tells Calf about etiquette when visiting someone's place. However, Alice understands it and asks them to have a pajamas party. They talk about their love story, but before they dive in deeper, Alice asks Viola what she wanted to give her earlier. Viola then takes out the servant's journal from her case and gives it to Alice in hope they can help to get a hint about Bakken's curse. Alice takes the journal, and they are off to bed. Calf and Viola argue as they feel cramped in that bed, but Alice looks at them happily. On the other hand, Walter has to deal with her mother again because Viola is going out again. Elsewhere, Deleth is seen in a monastery. It turns out she has been watching Alice, Bakshin, and people around them all this time. Deleth summons Zane and relays a message to his friend. The following day, Alice shows the journal to Rob. Alice finds something in the journal and asks Rob if he saw two nuns at the main residence when her mother worked as maid, but Rob states he didn't. Suddenly, Zane enters the room, and Bakken follows him. Zane passes a message from Daleth and glances at the journal in Alice's hand. It seems Rob notices something. Zane then invites Bakshan to play, and they play piano together. Zay plays the piano randomly, and Alice comes to bring some tea, but she is hiding behind the door and overhears Bakshan and Zane's conversation. Zane states the song he played was dedicated to Alice, but Zane refuses and tells him he will tell her his feelings in person. Alice is blushing to hear Bakshan's statement. The scene then shows Bakken, who is looking for Zane and asks Rob if he sees him. Rob tells him when he was upstairs, he heard a footstep on the stairs. It turns out Zane is on the roof. He stole the journal and is about to burn it, but is stopped by Bakshin. Finally, Zane tells him that Daleth summoned him to burn the journal. Zane admits he was forced to do that as Daleth threatened to take calf from him if he refused. However, Zane gives the journal to Bakshin. Bakshin smiles and give it back to Zane to destroy it stating he doesn't want to see Calf as harmed. Zane is impressed with his kindness and tells him that Daleth is watching him, and that she is wearing a skeleton so that she can monitor Bakshan and others through the eyes of other living things. Zane then shows his secret magic that only Calf knows and now Bakken gets to see it. He is able to dispose of anything and restore it if he still has a scrap of that thing. Zane destroys the book with his magic, but he keeps a tiny piece of it. He promises to give it back to Bakshin when Daleth is no longer watching him and leaves. Bokin goes inside and meets Alice. He lies to her, saying he keeps the journal and will return it to her when he finishes reading. Bokin goes on and tells her he will protect her no matter what happens. Alice praises him and tells him not to go too far. On the other hand, Daleth who finds out she was being tricked decides to let it be as she has found what she wanted to see. She heads to the coffin while saying that fate and destiny do exist. As she opens the coffin, Alice's mother is seen lying in the coffin, not knowing whether she was dead or asleep. The next morning, Rob sweeps the yard and finds some letters and one particular letter with a stamp from a familiar family. Rob, who notices it, immediately hands the letter to Bokshin. Bokshin is surprised to receive a letter from his mother for the first time. The letter informs him to come at the main residence in a week because there is something to talk about. Bokin decides to go to see his mother, but he feels uneasy about that. Alice, who is aware of his feelings, offers to come with him. When they arrive, Bokshan and Alice are welcomed by Viola, who walks them inside. Alice excuses herself to greet the maids, and Bokshan and Viola get into the house. The maids are afraid of Bokshan, and as they arrive at their mother's room, they see Walter by the door. Viola and Walter cheer on Bokshan. Bokshan enters the room and sees his mother. He feels nervous, but his mother states it is late, and they will talk tomorrow. Outside, Viola states that their mother is pretty nice today. Bokin thinks of how his brother and sister live their day. Viola and Walter walk into the guest room. On the other hand, Alice is welcomed warmly by the maids as she is brought to Sharon's room. 
Alice encounters Bakshin's mother, who mistaken her as Sharon. The maid who escorts Alice tells her that Bakshin's mother and her mother used to be close friends, but after Sharon's death, Bakshin's mother changed. Bokin goes to see Alice in her room, and heads back to his room. The next day, Viola takes Bakshin to the place he was cursed when he was child in front of the grave. Bokin remembers when he was little, he was looking for four leaves clover as the sign of fortune to give to Alice. Suddenly, the smoke billowed around him and someone hugged him from behind and casted a curse, that he would never know the love and never loved another in return and lived in despair. Viola comments that Rob told her he forgot about Alice for a moment. Bokshin replies that was because of his loneliness he had to push it away from his memory. They encounter their mother. She warns Viola to keep her distance from Bokshin and wear proper clothes. Furthermore, she tells Bokshan that they will talk at dinner. Bokin is worried with his sister about their mother, but she tells him she is used to it. Viola talks about her wish to move to Bokin's villa, but it is impossible. It goes the same way to Walter. They cannot live of their own since they were born to that family, and Bokin, who was exiled to the forest, is now living happily. It reminds him to Walter's word about someone's feeling that is always called by someone's spareness. At dinner, everyone gathers at the dining table. As they are about to dig in, their mother talks about their family. She states that their father as the head of the family has been sick for a long so that they need to decide the new family head immediately. Their mother states it will be either Bokshin or Walter to be the successor. Bokin is given time until spring, and if until then he's still unable to lift his curse, Walter will be decided to be the family head. Bokin understands and agrees to the condition. Later, his mother tells he can return after dinner. Bokshin then talks about Alice and his love for her. Her mother rejects the idea due to the social status. Furthermore, she tells him that as a noble, he cannot love someone randomly especially with a maid, but Bokshin stands against her. Bokshin tells her when she locked him away in the villa alone, Alice came and treated him like an actual human, and if it was not for Alice, he would have long died. He even yells at his mother to think about her children's feelings instead of family matters and its successor. Furthermore, he tells her his intention of marrying Alice. Viola and Walter are surprised and look at their mother. Bakshin states that he, Viola, and Walter are not her possessions that she can treat as she pleases. After saying all of these, he excuses himself, and Viola and Walter follow him to lead him to the door, leaving their mother alone. As they leave, their mother feels proud that Bakshin finally talks back to her. Bokshin and Alice go back to the villa, and they play cards with Rob. He tells Rob that he was called to see his mother to talk about the successor of the family and that he was given time until spring to lift his curse. Rob leaves while Bok and Alice continue playing. Bokshin then tells Alice that he told his mother about his feelings towards her. He states he will fight for her. The game ends and Bokshin wins the game. Bokin tells Alice that he will love her forever. Bokin falls asleep and Alice answers his confession, telling him she loves him. Thank you viewers who have always faithfully watched the videos on this channel from start to finish. Remember to subscribe, comment, and like this video if you enjoy our content. See you in the next video.